ಹಾಯ್ ಗಾಯ್ಸ್ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಟು ನಮ್ಮ ಕೆ ಪಿ ಎಸ್ ಸಿ ಅಕಾಡೆಮಿ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ಎಕನಾಮಿಕ್ ಸರ್ವೇ ವಿಡಿಯೋ ಸೀರೀಸ್ ನಾವು ಲೆಟಸ್ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂ ವಿತ್ ಅವರ್ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ವಿಚ್ ಡೀಲ್ಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಎಕನಾಮಿಕ್ ಇನ್ಫ್ರಾಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಚರ್ ಆಫ್ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಲೆಟಸ್ ಬಿಗಿನ್ ವಿತ್ ದ ಪವರ್ ಸೆಕ್ಟರ್ ಸೊ ಗಾಯ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಸ್ ಯು ಆಲ್ ನೋ ದೇರ್ ಆರ್ ವೇರಿಯಸ್ ಬೆನಿಫಿಟ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಎಲೆಕ್ಟ್ರಿಸಿಟಿ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಬೀನ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೀರಿಯನ್ಸಿಂಗ್ ಕಂಡೀಷನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಪವರ್ ಶಾರ್ಟೇಜ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಎವರ್ ಗ್ರೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಡಿಮಾಂಡ್ ಫಾರ್ ಪವರ್ ಇನ್ಫ್ಲೂಯೆನ್ಸ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ದ ರ್ಯಾಪಿಡ್ ಎಕನಾಮಿಕ್ ಪ್ರಾಗ್ರೆಸ್ ದ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಗವರ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಬೀನ್ ಟೇಕಿಂಗ್ ವೇರಿಯಸ್ ಇನಿಷಿಯೇಟಿವ್ಸ್ ಟು ಇಂಪ್ಲಿಮೆಂಟ್ ಪ್ರಾಜೆಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಪಬ್ಲಿಕ್ ಆಸ್ ವೆಲ್ ಆಸ್ ಪ್ರೈವೇಟ್ ಸೆಕ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಆ್ಯಡಿಂಗ್ ನ್ಯೂ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟಾಲ್ಡ್ ಕೆಪಾಸಿಟೀಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಪವರ್ ಜನರೇಷನ್ ಪವರ್ ಜನರೇಷನ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಪಬ್ಲಿಕ್ ಸೆಕ್ಟರ್ ಇಸ್ ಮ್ಯಾನೇಜ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ಪವರ್ ಕಾರ್ಪೊರೇಷನ್ ಲಿಮಿಟೆಡ್ ವೇರ್ ಆಸ್ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ಪವರ್ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಮಿಷನ್ ಕಾರ್ಪೊರೇಷನ್ ಲಿಮಿಟೆಡ್ ಡೀಲ್ಸ್ ವಿತ್ ದ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಮಿಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಪವರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಲೋಡ್ ಡಿಸ್ಪ್ಯಾಚ್ ಫಂಕ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಆಸ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ರೀಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಚರಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ಪವರ್ ಸೆಕ್ಟರ್ ಇನ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ದ ಅಸ್ಟ್ ವೈಲ್ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ಎಲೆಕ್ಟ್ರಿಸಿಟಿ ಬೋರ್ಡ್ ವಾಸ್ ರೀಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಚರ್ಡ್ ಆಸ್ ಕೆ ಪಿ ಟಿ ಸಿ ಎಲ್ ಇನ್ by giving it a corporate status as per the electricity act 2003 kptcl being the state's transmission utility is not empowered to trade in electricity therefore the distribution companies directly procure power from power generators both public and private and escoms own distribution network and use kptcls transmission network to distribute electricity now let us study about power sector reforms recognizing the crucial role of power in achieving economic progress karnataka was one of the first indian states to implement power sector reforms the institutional setup for undertaking the reforms was strengthened with enactment of karnataka electricity reforms act in 1999 The Karnataka Electricity Regulatory Commission was established as regulatory authority of state's power sector. Besides other functions, it regulates the tariff for supply of power to different categories of consumers. Four electricity supply companies, Bescom, Mescom, Hescom and Gescom were established in 2002 and another Escom. Chamundeshwari Electricity Supply Corporation Limited was established in 2005. The Hukkeri Rural Electric Cooperative Society is engaged in distribution business in Hukkeri Taluk. So these distribution companies are engaged in the retail supply of electricity to end consumers. Government of Karnataka accorded approval in April 2007 for setting up a special purpose vehicle that is Power Company of Karnataka Limited to supplement the efforts of KPCL in capacity addition. So this limited was established in 2007 under Companies Act 1956 and it is responsible for capacity addition in the power sector of Karnataka. Speaking about power generation, the state of Karnataka depends on several sources of supply for meeting its power requirements. The state has power generation infrastructure within the state belonging to both public and private sectors. In addition, it has guaranteed allocations from the central power generating stations and finally relies on imports from other states for bridging the demand supply gap. Thus, the main sources of power supply in Karnataka are generating stations of KPCL, independent power producers, states share from central generating stations, procurement from other states and lastly barter arrangement which is usually called as power banking. This graph presents the details of installed capacity of power generation in the year 2019-20. up to november 2019 this table presents the details of electricity procurement from other states through bilateral trade and purchase through energy exchanges and this table presents the details of energy produced within karnataka up to november 2019 now we must study about power transmission in karnataka 
As we discussed already, it is done by the state transmission utility, which is Karnataka Power Transmission Company Limited. KPTCL is the state transmission utility engaged in the business of transmission of electricity in the state. It is the responsibility of KPTCL to construct power stations and lines and strengthen the system for easing network, congestion, power evacuation, etc. The status of the transmission infrastructure as at the end of November 2019 is given in this table. The transmission lines of different voltage classes, new substations added and capacity augmentation in the existing substations during the 12th period from 2013-14 to 2017-18 are presented through these tables. In addition, KPTCL has taken up various measures to reduce the transmission and distribution losses which are presented here. You can go through them. In addition, following measures are taken for the reduction of aggregate technical and commercial losses by KPTCL. Through all these measures, the KPTCL was able to reduce the AT&C and T&D losses which is presented in this figure. Also, Karnataka government provides subsidy in the power sector. There is a scheme called Bhagya Jyoti or Kutira Jyoti where beneficiaries enjoy free power. This table presents the details of the subsidies provided up to the November 2019. Now, we must study about electricity demand and supply status. This graph presents the trends in peak demand for power and peak energy supply. Continuing, the first graph provides the details of power supply and demand gap and the second graph provides the details of energy supply and demand gap. So what are the steps taken by government of Karnataka to manage the demand side management? The steps taken are briefly mentioned in the present slide and the next slide. You can go through them. Now we must study about rural electrification. Towards meeting the targets stipulated by the national electricity policy, the state government has planned initiatives for energization of villages, hamlets, Harijan Bastis and Tandas. All the villages of Karnataka have been electrified. The ESCOMs have planned to energize hamlets and tandas in a phased manner. The details of electrification status in hamlets, Harijan Bastis, tandas and IPSH during the last 5 years and in the current financial year are provided in the table. Now we must discuss about Karnataka Renewable Energy Development Limited. It is the nodal agency for the development of renewable energy sources in Karnataka. This limited is also implementing the government of Karnataka's policy on renewable energy. And in addition, to harness the potential of solar resources in state, government of Karnataka issued solar policy for the year 2014 to 2021, which is being implemented by KREDL. There are various objectives of solar policy which are mentioned here. This table presents the details of capacity additions under renewable energy in Karnataka. You can go through the table. Whereas this table presents the details of cumulative progress in renewable energy in Karnataka. From the table we can observe that the Wind power has the maximum allotted capacity whereas the solar power including solar rooftop has the maximum installed capacity in Karnataka. Now we must study about rural energy programs. Important schemes are new national biogas and organic manure program and the Karnataka state biofuel policy 2009. About New National Biogas and Organic Manure Program we have already discussed in one of our previous videos. In the same line, we have also discussed about the Karnataka State Biofuel Policy 2009 in one of our previous videos. The centrally sponsored schemes in the field of power sector include Deen Dayal Upadhyay Gram Jyoti Yojana, Integrated Power Development Scheme and lastly Ujwal Discom Assurance Yojana Scheme, about which we shall study in the future. 
Now we will study about the initiatives taken up by government of Karnataka in the year 2019-20. The state government has proposed to implement the solar energy projects through KREDL for providing solar water pumps to the beneficiary farmers. In addition, government of India is implementing the green energy corridor project which aims at synchronizing electricity produced from renewable energy and transmitting it through grids of which Karnataka is a part. In addition, Government of Karnataka is implementing the BESCOM Distribution Automation System project. This is a project to automate the distribution network of monitoring, control and operation of 11 kW network in Bangalore city to enhance reliability and quality of power. In addition, Nirantara Jyoti project is a prestigious scheme of Government of Karnataka which intends to provide 24 hours three-phase power supply to non-agricultural loads like domestic, commercial, water supply, street light, rural industries, milk dairies, etc. in rural areas by segregating the agricultural loads, which is a boon to the rural economy. So guys, in the next video, let us discuss about roads, transportation, infrastructure and communications in Karnataka. So guys, we are concluding with our discussion. Before concluding, here is a reminder. In the description box, you shall find the links to download the ebooks of Nama KPSC Academy. So guys, thank you for watching. If you like the video, please like and subscribe Nama KPSC YouTube channel. For more queries, contact us. Thank you again.